Well, folks, we're really looking forward to another red letter day of racing here at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth. The best horses in the land are turning out, and there's no doubt that there's some big highlights today. Obviously, the WSB Phillies Guineas, which should be very competitive, a pretty open race. But for me and for many race goers, the highlight is to see three horses coming together to battle it out. Those three are the Philly Princess Calla, who is the reigning horse of the year. Charles Dickens, who is a local favourite, and we of course all know what he means to local race goers, and dare I say it, to South African race goers. But there's a certain Seat again who has been terrific of late, and he might well be the horse to pick up and run the gauntlet as we head into next year, 2024, with the Lorma on Keaton's plate and the WSB Cape Met. But let's start out with the WSB Cape Phillies Guineas race meeting. Whistle the tune in front, blowing in the wind, tries to have a last press, but it's going to go to Whistle the tune. Whistle the tune, the winner. Still very, very green, but uh, there was confidence and looks to be a nice horse in the making. Yeah, I only got to sit on on Thursday for the first time and she showed speedy work. Today she was so different, she jumped and her head was up and she just looked at everything. And her action was so nice and smooth and there was still so much horse to come. Um, she didn't. Re she actually looked from the jump to the finish the whole way and she still won the race so she's definitely decent and she'll definitely go on from this. When I saw this filly as a yearling I said oh my god she's beautiful she just had everything about her she I just love everything and what I really particularly like is that I think that uh, this is the first Vercingetrix mare uh, to go to stud um, when I spoke to Barbara Sona she said that the, the, the filly had got hurt and they sent to stud very early and I could see so many traits of both stallions there, so it was, uh, it was a no-brainer to try and buy her, and uh, we got it at a very, very reasonable price. Thank you so much. It's, a, it's absolutely amazing how blessed are we to win the first two baby races um, and of the season in Cape Town. Gosh, it's, I feel like I need to pinch myself, to be honest. And the winner of our 1,000 Rand Hollywood Bet Star Groom Initiative is none other than Mr. Mazinga. Well done, Mr. Mazinger. Uh, Mr. Mazinger. Mr. Mazinger is under uh, Glenn Carson and also Woodhill Racing. Congratulations for the big win, and I'm sure many more to come. Trippy Silk, though, just the one in front. It's Trippy Silk with Hudia in second. Then comes Dancing to the Lot, making eye catching late gains, but victory is for Trippy Silk. Yeah, he was traveling quite smartly. Gareth said, his last workout, listen, don't tuck him in because I know you're probably looking to. And uh, I listened to him, I allowed him to use his stride and he was happy within it. And perhaps Zimbal didn't suit him for one and for two, he didn't enjoy the turn so much. So it was a fluent win today. He's got ability. Perhaps we ran him a fraction soon. Because, uh, yeah, he was allowed to use his stride. He was comfortable within it and he gave a kick off that. At least he's got his maiden on the way now and hopefully going in the right direction now. And I still think he's got a lot of maturing to do. I mean, he's, he's an enormous horse and uh, I think he probably will go a bit further. But it's nice to see him showing a, you know, a bit of pace today and you know, being able to finish off his race and actually putting his head down and doing what he's supposed to be doing. Thanks so much. Well done to Candice and the team back home and a great ride by Aldo. Were you confident coming in? Slightly confident. <laughs> All in. Gates are back and they fired away the real prince all over him. Here's the real prince, the real deal. The real prince wins. Craig, I'm gonna leave it to you because from the grandstand, that looks super impressive. Yeah, um, we are quite surprised, Ben, and he's a real uh, nice horse, but I actually only put my leg over him for the first time last week, Monday, and he's still quite a big softy. Um, I know as a youngster, he, he had a niggle, which, which made him not run as a two-year-old. But Mr. Kenneme has just bided his time. Dean, well done for the win. Yeah, Vicky, I'm um, pleasantly surprised and uh, we'll take the win with both hands. Uh, but uh, it, it, was, it, was a, it was a super win. Handlers clear. And they're off. With Eternal Optimus, to a penny up the inside. Then comes Gimme the Limelight. But now Eternal Optimist and to a penny fights it out. Eternal Optimist under Greg Sheen win. Yeah, thank you. It was pretty straightforward. Um, found the position I wanted. I was uh, two back, one out, and uh, the race was run at a fair tempo. I wouldn't say it was overly quick. Track's running a bit fast at the minute, and uh, wanted to be in a striking position. Nice, long striding filly, and once I got into the gap, about 300 out, and got into a struggle with Corne, they, they helped each other along to the line, and I'm just glad I got out on top. 
She, she's just not ready. She wants 2,000 meters and, uh, but she's just not ready for it yet. We tried her about 18 the other way. It's just a little bit weak. Uh, Gregory said she still needs a little bit more time before she goes back over 18 and that. I just want to say uh, well done to Dennis and Jennifer. Great day of them as owners, great day of a winner for them. And to Calder Fawcett Varsantine, well done, he bred it. And away they go. Then comes Baltic Secret, fantastic Baltic Secret in the run down to the wire and in, in the end it goes to Quince's Light. Well done, Grant. Um, I must be honest, I didn't spot you that last bit because at the 300 you still look to be second last and at the finish you've been able to win by about a long neck. Yeah, look, I think um, it was a very rough race. Um, there could possibly a few, be a few unlucky losers for some, but I think this would have been the most un uh, unluckiest loser if she you know, had to get beat. She was going to start and, and we chatted to Andreas and said, you know, um, race another year, have a bit of fun. I had a filly years ago called Dancer's Daughter and I, I really wanted to race another year because sadly you get a good race or it doesn't guarantee you to have a, a champion brood mare, unfortunately. So if a filly is so talented at racing, race them, have a bit of fun. You saw it with Winx, you saw, you know, the top race fillies, they, they, it's what they're good at. And away they go. See it again, came into the lead. He has Charles Dickens on the ropes. Then comes Princess Keller and at my command. But what a performance from See It Again. That is out of the top draw. Just a couple of months ago, we're looking to hang up the boots and you found yourself with See It Again. You must be super impressive with his performance today. Yeah, I'm very impressed. Um, just to start off with, thank you very much to Mace again and to Mr. Nick Johnson. Uh, I think everyone knows that I'm still riding because of this horse. Um, uh, and it's how lucky a person can be. I was supposed to ride a horse in the derby last year and my ride got scratched and this horse became available and it just keeps you going for a little bit longer. Last time we were on the stage was the derby win. Yes, that's correct. That's the last time I was here. You know, if I may, uh, I just say I'm super impressed um, what they've done to the Kenilworth race course, the, you know, the, I've been here coming here since the 70s, but um, it's a fantastic transformation. He had a fantastic trip down here, he arrived here, uh, Nick and myself came back uh, down here last week to look at him, and he looked magnificent. Greenpoint Stakes, which saw the coming together of favourite Charles Dickens, Princess Calla, and then See It Again, who's lowered all of their colours. It's always been a great race, Neil, in that it's a it's a brilliant lead up to the Lomarok King's Plate and ultimately into the World Sports Bid in Cape Met. But today, as we saw a real marker in the ground come from See It Again, Pierre Stratum, I mean, it's just, it's a great story to be told. 57 years old, this time last year was ready for a time and hoping to get one last crack at a Durban Jalau or at a Met and, uh, and here we are with what is going to be the favourite for the Cape Mets and see it again and blowing the horse of the year Princess Keller away and also Charles Dickens who was enterprisingly ridden from the back of the field in contention in the nick of time at the top of the straight and his effort petered out so I know the bigger picture is obviously the Lomarok Kings plate for Charles Dickens but right now see it again is, is clearly the leader of the pack. And they racing away. And here comes Beach Bomb, quickening with Silver Sanctuary. Silver Sanctuary takes the lead, close home. Beach Bomb in the run down to the wire. Beach Bomb got the better of Silver Sanctuary. Aldo, congratulations. Take us through it. I watched you closely. She's got an unbelievable turn of foot and um, at the line, sneaky word to JP. Yeah, no, I was just checking. She's JP ran right up to me and it looked like it was going to go past. Well done to you, my man. Bye, nappies. <laughs> and um, as we went, she just started finding a bit more rhythm. In a gallop, she ducked in, so I thought I'm going to be ready for this. And as I asked for more, initially my plan was to place her. So it's not going to work out. She doesn't want to be there. I'm going to have to trust her. Unbelievable. I knew she was well, the way she turned around down the straight. Like a filly that only can the strains. We're just saying, you see this filly and when they get here, and here you are. 
I did, Vicky. I think after a second win, I said to I said to Kevin and to everyone at home that I will win the Phillies Guineas with this filly. She's um, Vicky. She's got the most wonderful turn of foot. She's not the biggest of filly. She's a she's a small little filly, but she's got lovely constitution. Um, she's got a tiny little head with little bug eyes. She's a strange looking filly, but she she's got a lovely turn of foot. Obviously, she's bred in the purple too, so that also makes a huge difference. Yeah, obviously, just a massive congratulations to Gaynor. Um, we've we've tried uh, um, a lot of very very good fillies and tried to win this race, and it's it's really really hard. So, been incredibly well done to to Candice and her and her team, and uh, and obviously Aldo. It's a it's a really special win. Hilton, quite um, an exciting finish there. Yeah, thanks, Vicky. Um, very well done to Drakenstein. You know they put so much into racing, and for them to run one two in our race is it's quite a, it's quite great. Indeed, and thank you very much for a spectacular day. The course looks uh, good and the racing's even better. Yeah, the racing's been amazing. And I mean, such a great um, performance by Seed again. So it'll be very interesting to see what price he is when the, we open up the Met on Monday. The WSB Phillies Guineas today. And this belonged to Gaynor, Rupert and Drakenstein Stud. They got a exacta, first and second past the post. Mm, with Beach Bomb out of the great mayor Beach Beauty, who won so many great ones around the country. Um, Candice Bass Robinson. Am I right in saying that was Drakenstein's first Phillies Guineas win? Because listening to Kevin Somerville afterwards, that's a race that saluted them, which is mm. a huge surprise. Um, so, you know, ill-fated Lancaster Bomber, the, the sire, and uh, and Beach Beauty, just a, a wonderful plan came together. Aldo de Mayo on board. Tricky draw. Pace was on. 100% yes. the pace was on, so you'd probably find the race was run to suit. I thought the second or Silver Sanctuary put up a brilliant performance. Her turn of foot was eye-catching. Um, and I think Mike de Cox got an embarrassment of riches with his three-year-old fillies because some stayed at home in Joburg and the former Gimme Another and Champagne Cocktail. So they're three that he can pick his uh, places with. And they're off. Aragosta goes on the attack, drops Otto Lucan into second. Razor Hallelujah was further back, but it's Aragosta in control, and Aragosta gonna come out on top. It's Richard. Fantastic training performance from Mike because just seven days ago in the Petway Summer Cup, yeah, we go in the Western Cape and won a good race. Yeah, look, before the race, uh, Mr. Lecoq said he was very surprised how close he ran in the Summer Cup. And, uh, you know, even though it's a week ago, I always believe a change is as good as a holiday. And uh, he loved the gallop. It was very docile. We're doing 15s at Furlong. And uh, I knew from riding him in the past, I can get going early, even though he had a big weight to collar. Um, he's, uh, he's a good staying type. He needed the run in the group, so he had a gallop in a five million rand race last week for this for today. Um, he pulled up exceptionally well. There was just no reason to not, not to run him. But you know, we were we went into that race a run and a really good gallop short. Well, I think uh, that's that's your game. You you find the alternative way, and it works. And that's the proof is in the pudding today. Oh, that's because I need the money, Vicky. You know what I mean. Well done to all the partners. Uh, thanks to Mike and his team, to Trevor, does all the work. I wondered why they were bringing the horse down five days later, but then I saw the 50 grand check for the trainer, so it all fell into place. But well done also to the breeders, to Moritz Fontaine and Bokobos Shift, and obviously, as Mike mentioned, fantastic mare, and onwards and upwards. Gates crash back. And they're off and racing from the 1,200 meter mark, and the start has caught them in a pretty level line. King of the draws, handing tough deep routes is Yamadori. USA Soap trying to cut back the deficit with double charge, but King of the Goals gets there. Today, um, I said, look, I'm looking for a little bit of cover, uh, and you know, riding from there, but he, he blitzed out the pins. I took a hold, he took a hold, and I said, look, yeah, we're both fighting, and uh, I'm gonna try and change things so I threw the reins at him and his ears came up and I said okay this is a good sign and uh, through the 400 I hadn't asked him for any work and he was still going the same sort of speed and I thought to myself you know if I tighten the reins at the 300 and let's see what he does he picked himself up quite well. A lovely way to open your, your season or your, your campaign in the Cape. Yeah isn't it just um, you know Robert we, we, we bought the source at the sale where he qualifies to run in that um, seven and a half million rand sales rate providing someone joins us as a partner, you know. Um, from the day he, he had his first gallop, um, he obviously was a very quick horse and, and with a lot of ability. So I said to Robert, um, you know, this is definitely above average horse, but he should have been gelded early. You know, this is 
deja vu for me because Tony said he was here in 1987. So what's that, 36 years ago? First time I met him, lived with me for four months. He bought three horses, Senor Santa, Harry Hill and Harry Zecker. And um, here we are, 36 years later. So really is quite amazing. Um, thanks to my partner, Mary, for allowing him to come to Cape Town. Uh, the idea was to go for that sales race, as you know, but how he's going to get a mile, I don't know. Set for a start, last race of the afternoon, gates are back and away in racing from the 1,200 metre mark. It's missed green lights, that's hit the front with 150 metres left to go. Flying V's out the pack chasing with Pacific Green, but there's no stopping Miss green lights, who wins going away into the closing stages in the last race. Uh, well done, Rich. Just uh, chatting to you. I think it's the last three that uh, you've closed it off and you'll be happy with how the afternoon's worked out. Yeah, look, it started very tough and, you know, scratching my head a little and I thought it's all me. And it was hard to find our momentum and the right sort of thing to do. Um, but, uh, yeah, it turned out to be a great day. Yeah, listen, she's she's very honest fully and I think she's been dying to get back to Kenworth um, down the straight. And obviously, the race panned out beautifully. She had a nice lead. Um, Richard produced at the right moment and she, she won really well today. So I'm um, very happy for her. Well done to, to Dalma um, and of course to Dr. Parker and of course to Lance. Always good to have Lance on course. So uh, very happy to end the day with a win for him. But I just want to say, if Mrs. Gre if Mrs. Greenlight's happy to be back at Kenilworth, I'm happy to be back at Kenilworth. Great to be here. Great, great ambiance. Well done to everyone here. Great day to Ashley, my mum. Brett, the, the yard, everyone is into Richard, my fishing friend now. <laughs>quality, the class, um, and just the facility, I think all lends to what was a great day's racing. It helps by the quality of horse, it helps with see it again, Princess Keller, Charles Dickens being in the card, it helps with a grade one race being on the card, but overall, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed myself today. Alistair Cohen, thanks very much for that. Horse racing in a very good space right now here in South Africa. We're heading into this Cape summer season. Well, we're in it now, and there were plenty of good news stories today. More to come. And we'll see you here at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth on Sunday the 10th for the Merchants.